Welcome to the Aim for Success podcast. I'm Joni Knighty, a licensed psychotherapist and certified clinical hypnotist and trainer. I'm also the founder of Aim for Success and Joni Knighty Hypnosis. I've been practicing for over 27 years and I'm excited about sharing my experiences and those of my guests. Be sure and check out my website, aim-for-success.com and joni90hypnosis.com to learn more about my services and products. I also invite you to check out my store, aim-store.net. As a gift to you for listening to this podcast, use the code SUCCESS to receive 25% off your first self-hypnosis audio purchase. You are listening to episode 11 of the Aim for Success podcast featuring Annie Laser. Annie is currently number one in the world in the 200 breaststroke and the 2018 Short Course World Champion. Listen as Annie talks about her interesting journey in the sport of swimming and her amazing comeback. Hear how she's handling the disappointments surrounding the postponement of the 2020 Olympics. And notice how she clearly demonstrates the attitude of a champion during this global pandemic. Welcome, everyone, to the Aim for Success podcast featuring Annie Laser. We are so excited. Hey, Annie. Hi. So excited to have you here today, especially during all of the changes that have been going on. And I want you to know, and I know I mentioned this to you earlier before we started recording, how excited and people are in terms of anticipating this podcast and how how many people, how many needs are going to be met. Oh, well, you're sweet. Thank you. I hope I can... I hope I can help as much other people as other people have, you know, helped me. It's just, it's genuinely just about, you know, paying it forward to anyone that's helped me throughout my career thus far. So, well, that's a, that's a great attitude and not a surprise to me because you have a tendency to always have a good attitude or at least <laughs> to make whatever adjustments you need to get through whatever challenging adventure or situation you're in and we're in one now aren't we yeah I'd say yeah for sure it's definitely coming in handy right now like you know I genuinely think a lot of my you know experiences over the last few years um have definitely you know prepared me for you know maybe not something of this magnitude you know there's a lot of emotions that go behind this but have certainly prepped me for you know dealing dealing with any kind of adversity or setback or, you know, just not being really prepared for something, something that's out of your control. So I'm I'm sure we'll get into all of those, you know, talking through here. But, um, but yeah, in, in this time specifically, I genuinely hope that, you know, my experiences and what I've learned in my trials and errors can help other people, especially in a time like this. Well, I I feel certain that you, you will not only on this podcast, but You'll have plenty of opportunity to do, do that. And um, so, yeah, speaking of that, that's a great question to always ask ourselves is when we're in the middle of adversity, disappointment, uh, something sometimes tragic happens, it's a great question to ask is what is this preparing me for? Mm-hmm. Because I do believe that all of those things, you know, those types of situations are designed for that. Yeah, and yeah. It, if we think of it that way, we'll be okay. Mm-hmm. So let's 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 look at your journey and see how that has all come together for you. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. and it's not over. We're <laughs> we're just at, at a little stall right now because you don't yeah. have any opportunity to compete. But yeah. um, but that's okay because you know how to start things back up because you've actually done it. So the last, yeah, the last time I interviewed you, you were leaving the sport Mm -hmm. and yeah, you had a great attitude about that and some wonderful reflection. And so going back to how we, how do we, how we know each other? um, Yeah. 
let's talk about that. Yeah. So I know you and your whole family, quite frankly, um, because I um, swam at Auburn in college and um, was um, best friends with your daughter, Ashley. We lived together. We were best friends. Um, and through that also, um, she's also getting her master's at Indiana now. And I'm conveniently also training as a postgrad at Indiana University. So we live like we lived with each other down in Auburn, down in the South, and now we live like half a mile from each other in the Midwest. Um, through that, I've obviously gotten to know, you know, you and your whole family, and you're just like a second family to me. And I know you and my mom have spent plenty of time together at meets and, you know, at dinners and, you know, whatnot. So it's been nice to, you know, have a little, you know, tag team to travel with. It has been so great. And I just love the family connection now. You know, we all also gain confidence that you two would always be there for each other and you have oh yeah i remember a time when you were both here on spring break mm -hmm. at my pool and we don't have to go into all the details of that but you were both in a in a place that you weren't satisfied with yeah uh, we were in a tough place it was it was definitely a time where we both needed to just kind of get away and take a breather from our realities we weren't happy with really how life was going and swimming or really any, any, many aspects of it. So it was a, it was a tough time for sure. And then guess what happened? So Ashley goes on to become a, you know, national champion and Annie laser goes on to become a world champion. Mm -hmm. So that time was, you know, what, what was that time preparing you for? Well, I guess you yeah. might have an answer to that now. Yeah. Um, I mean, that time was short lived in comparison to just, you know, what it's taught me, you know, throughout the rest of my career, not only in, not only in swimming, but also in life, you know, um, it's just taught me that if things are really worth, um, you know, I, I think I learned that when I was in that moment too, because there was a lot of times where I wanted to quit swimming. I hadn't, hadn't dropped time. And, you know, by the time I was into my sophomore year of college, I hadn't dropped time since, uh, you know, I dropped time in one event my senior year of high school. And before that, I hadn't dropped time in my other event since my sophomore year of high school. So it had been between two to four years that I had dropped any time. Um, so I was really wondering for a long time if I was done in the sport, you know, um, wasn't going to get any better. I wasn't enjoying it. I was training great and like working so hard every day. And then for what? To get to the end of the season and just be devastated? Like, uh, it's terrible. It's, I wish, I wish that feeling on no one, you know, but everyone in this sport has experienced that at one point in time. Yes. And, um, I genuinely think, um, you know, it made me sit back and wonder like, you know, what am I doing this for? Am I doing this for my, just for myself? Am I doing this for my own personal glory? Am I doing this for my team? Am I doing this for, you know, the people that have put so much into me that have supported me and loved me? And I just kind of decided like, Yes, this is my own personal choice, but I, I can choose to be successful and um, be grateful for everything that I have around me and not just sulk because, you know, I didn't get a time that I wanted, you know, and, and that's really what it taught me. And I really think that in the months past after that, I really turned a corner mentally. And, um, you know, after that year, um, my career, you know, my last two years at Auburn, um, are really two of the best swimming years that I had had, you know, to date. Um, uh, I ended up, you know, having a really great, you know, junior year, ended up being an all American at Auburn, my junior year. Um, that summer I went to my first, um, international meet for the U S and I won my first international medal and I ended up qualifying for the U S national team that summer. That was um, very exciting. Yeah, that was, that was really exciting and just nothing I could have even, you know, imagined or hoped for even a year prior to that. So that was really, really exciting. And just, you know, just the world in the universe, just kind of working in mysterious ways, you know? Um, so yeah, so I did that. And then, you know, the next year was my senior year. And that was also going into the Olympic year, 2015 to 2016. So um, I had a really great senior year. And, you know, given that, um, you know, I qualified for the national team the summer before, and I was on the national team, um, after my career, my college career was over in March, you know, Olympic trials were only three months after that. So I kind of thought to myself like, well, I'm on the national team. That means I'm, you know, top six, in the, 
top six in the country. Like what's to say I can't make the Olympic team, you know, like if I'm fourth right now and they take two, why can't I make the Olympic team? You know? So, so I really took that to heart and I really wanted to, you know, go all in and, and be, you know, ready to give it anything I had to make the team. Um, so it, things really kind of started to look up for me a little bit, my remaining two years at Auburn. Um, so your mindset was in a really good place at this yeah, point. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I yeah. felt like I finally had, um, what I thought I was, you know, lacking, um, right. for my whole time, you know, prior to that, I never really had that great club team with a huge group of kids. I was always traveling the national meets by myself. Mm -hmm. Um, I never really had like a consistent coach that would stay with our team, um, throughout my club swimming. Um, so that was really hard that I didn't really have like that coach that I really just was bought all into. Um, you know, and again, just like, you know, swimming for no one, but like yourself at such a young age, like that's really hard. Um, you know, so but when you examined your big why, what you just described, when you looked at your the big why, it it, it is swimming. Yeah, exactly, and it, and it really it made me. It gen. I genuinely appreciated the team and the coaches and the culture at Auburn so much because you know, not to say that my experience in high school wasn't great. I obviously had success and I was a good swimmer, and it got me to where I am today. But I didn't have all of those extra things that made swimming just genuinely something that I loved, you know? So, um, so I really, really valued that a lot. And then, you know, in the three months between, you know, being at NCAAs as a senior and swimming for Auburn to going to trials, kind of a lot of stuff I felt like in that moment kind of started to fall apart, if you will. Um, you know, I wasn't on the team anymore, so I kind of could do my own thing a little bit, but, you know, I was still training with the team. Um, and then about two months or so before trials, um, my coach, the really the first guy that I genuinely, you know, trusted and said, like, this is my guy. This is the coach that I trust 100 percent. He's going to put me on the Olympic team um, was really the only guy that I'd been training with for a little over two years by that point. Right. Um, he took a head coaching job somewhere else um, about two months before Olympic trials. Right. Um, and by the end of the week, he was gone. Um, so that was, that was really, almost about this time. It was about this time. Yeah. Maybe yeah. even later than this time. Yeah. Four um, years like ago. Beginning of April, mid April, um, right before Olympic trials in June. So, um, I mean, I was just devastated. Like I was crushed. Um, cause not only was he a great coach to me, but he was also a really great mentor to me. Um, and I had never really experienced that kind of, um, genuine loss before where I was kind of like, well, what now, you know, what do I do? You know, I haven't really been training with any of the other coaches here. You know, I am, I'm nervous, you know, like I didn't know what to do. And, and, um, you know, that being said, I, I kind of lost faith in myself a little bit. I kind of forgot that, you know, coaches are great. Coaches are amazing. Coaches are the ones who have a broader perspective on the sport than you do. They're the ones that, you know, give you the practices. They're the ones that, you know, are really mentoring you, um, you know, in a physical aspect, but hopefully also a mental aspect. Um, but, you know, I didn't give myself credit in the fact that I was doing the work right. and I was the one training so hard and I was the one, you know, going to bed on time, eating right, you know, lifting well, you know, ev I was doing everything physically correctly. Um, and I think now looking back on that, I should have given myself more credit for doing that because then when you my can do that now, if you want, <laughs> I, I certainly tried, I tried to, you know, as much as I, as much as I can, um, you know, I have a great environment around me now as well, but I, I certainly try to do that now as well. Um, but, but for reflecting back on it as you right. are now, you oh see that, where the, that you do own that credit. Yeah, exactly. And I, and I didn't do that in that moment. So I kind of just thought like everything has to be an exact way. Everything has to be in this perfect little box for me to be successful. And I had a big piece of that box that went missing and I was like, well, that's it. Like I'm done. Like 
can't make the team now, you know, like, and that is not the attitude to have. <laughs> I mean, it's okay to feel, you know, devastated and disappointment when, you know, you hit a roadblock or you hit a, a setback, minor or major, but, um, you know, if you shouldn't throw in the towel because of that, like, you're still the same athlete that you were the day before. Um, so why, why is your plan for success now going to change? Like, you're not doing anything different, you know? So, so yeah, that's kind of the really major careful. thing that I learned. Yeah. Yeah. Be really careful, you know, how you talk to yourself. It's yeah. okay, like you said, it's okay to have these feelings because we're human. We're going to have these feelings. But yeah. when thoughts start to align with the feeling, we call that emotional reasoning. Mm -hmm. um, I feel this, therefore it must be true. Mm -hmm. And then it sets off subtle to sometimes significant changes oh, in yeah. your physicality. So that would affect okay. the way you swim, the way that you, your motivation mm -hmm. and all of those other things. So, um, but you didn't stop there. So what's the rest of this? Story? Yeah. So I, so I ended up, you know, not having the greatest Olympic trials. I didn't make the Olympic team, um, you know, which was devastating. And, you know, I, I kind of put myself in like kind of, you know, the last couple months leading up to trials kind of put myself in a little bit of a, a pity party a little bit, you know, I, I kind of just gave up and was like, well, like, you know, it's probably not going to happen because my little square of, all my toolbox of my toolbox to be successful isn't full. So can't be successful. And that's just obviously simply not true. Right. Um, so after right. Olympic trials, um, didn't make the team. Um, I kind of decided that from the last couple months of my swimming career that I kind of felt like swimming was telling me it was, it was time to be done. You know, I, you know, professional swimming really was not what it was even four years ago that it is now. Right. Um, which is really exciting for the sport, obviously. Um, but for me, I was like, okay, well, you know, I, I'm not going to get any funding from this. I'm not going to, you know, I didn't make the Olympic team. And I'm not swimming for Auburn anymore. So I guess it's just kind of time to be done. And I really truly believed that. And I wanted that, um, you know, so I graduated from Auburn, you know, six months later in December, I got a job um, working in operations out at the University of California, Berkeley. Um, so I moved all the way across the country and um, started my real world job. And I really genuinely loved it. Like I really loved it. And I, I really thought that that was, you know, what I wanted my life to be from now on. And um, it was, uh, it was definitely like what happened next was not what I expected at all. Um, you know, so I took a, I, I retired for a whole year. A great attitude because I remember yeah. That once you made it, you made a decision, mm -hmm. that, and I think this is an important point I want to make for some of the other athletes or or just anyone, mm -hmm. is that you can be decisive about something. You can make a decision and go on and with a great attitude and have a new experience. But that doesn't mean the decision is necessarily permanent, even mm -hmm. though it may feel like it at the moment. I think you can. I think you can always make a decision about something because you can always. Um, know that you're going to want to try something or do something and have an open mind to it and have a great attitude about it. Those are two things that you can always control. Um, so those are the two main things that I really took into that. And I really had an amazing experience and that's really what I wanted to do. Um, you know, but it just kind of, I, I kind of decided like after a year that, you know, if I was still really invested in swimming and I still really loved it, um, you know, I should probably just, try it again because you know i can i can work for the rest of my life i can't swim for the rest of my life so, so um, at maybe, least at the level i'm at now was there a defining moment though where it just it really hit you or did you see something or something happen or somebody said something what triggered that that gut level decision that mm -hmm. i i i, I want to go back yeah well, first and foremost, I wanted to do it because I wanted to do it, not because anyone else wanted me to do it. Um, I did have a lot of people say, you know, after I, you know, finaled that Olympic trials and just missed making the Olympic team, they're like, why aren't you still swimming? You know, why aren't you, you should still be swimming. Like you're, you did so well, like you're great. And I was like, I don't want to, like, I am really upset with how the last few months of my career went. So I really wanted it to come from me. 
So in my decision, I kind of honestly kept my cards held a little bit close to my chest. Um, but that being said, I'd say about six months into retirement, um, I ran into a girl um, who I really looked up to on my club team when I was younger. Um, and, uh, she and I were kind of talking about it. I kind of told her a little bit about, you know, what happened towards the end of my career. And, um, she just said, you know, Annie, like, just give it six, just give it a year, give it a year. So another six months from now, give it a year. And there's any part of you at all that wants to keep swimming. You absolutely should do it with no hesitation. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, all right, well, I don't really want to do that right now. Like I'm about to start this great new job in California. So like, I don't really. I don't really want that for me right now, but I took it, I took it to heart. And, um, you know, I was still just so, you know, emotionally invested in swimming. You know, that was the year that Ashley, you know, had a breakout year and won the mile at SECs and, you know, was top eight at NCAAs and, you know, like that being my best friend, I was invested in that, not just because of the sport, but because of her, you know? So I, I still stayed really invested in the sport and um about a year came uh about a, a year rolled around about june the next year and i was offered um a promotion at my job um and no surprise kinda, there yeah <laughs> and um i was offered a promotion and i you know kind of thought to myself like okay like if i take this if i take this job like I, that's it for me. Like I cannot swim again. Like that is me making my decision. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, I kind of realized after a minute that, um, if I was even thinking about that, um, then I'd probably made my decision. If I was even thinking about, you know, the possibility of swimming again, and if I took this job, I couldn't swim again then my, my heart was already kind of telling me, you know, it, like, you're not done. Like, if you really were thinking about it, then at all, then you should do it again, because you can't do this forever. So it was an extremely risky <laughs> decision, given that I hadn't swum for a year. Um, it was a brave, really, bold decision. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Especially since, again, like I said, even that time three years ago, like pro swimming was not what it is now. And I hadn't swum in a year and I was petrified. I mean, I talked to my, my old coach, um, who I wanted to go train with again, and he was just all on board. He said, you know, if this is what you want to do, we will figure it out. We will find a way to make it work. Um, he's like, I really care about you. You're a hard worker. And that's all I really, that's all I really could ask of you. So um, you know, we're going to make it work if you want to, if you want to try this again. So I said, okay, I do. And he said, all right. So I, you know, I quit my job. And I, went back um, across country. <laughs> went back across the country. Um, my old head coach, my old, my old coach from Auburn, um, John Hargis is now the head coach at the university of Pittsburgh. So, um, I followed him to Pittsburgh. Thankfully I have like half of my family that like conveniently lives in Pittsburgh. So yes. I lived with some of them for a little bit. Um, cause obviously, a pro swimmer who hasn't swum in a year isn't really making that much money. So, um, so I did that. Um, I coached on the side, make some money. Um, and yeah, I, I just, it was so scary to come back and, you know, just every day, you know, comparing myself to where I was that time a year ago, like training for the Olympics, basically, um, you know, wh like, why do we do that to ourselves? Why do we, you know, beat ourselves down with, you know, these things? Yeah, I just, I was not, you know, it was so hard for me. And, and the thing that I learned from it the most was being patient with myself. Yes. Um, because coming back was I was, you know, I wasn't out of shape, but I was out of shape for swimming. <laughs> so, you know, I, um, I really um, learned how to be patient with myself. I, you know, would, it, I would have to stop myself and say like, okay, like we're not anywhere near where we want to be or where we need to be, but I'm, you know, I might be 200 steps behind where I was a year ago training for Olympic trials, but I'm two steps ahead of where I was last week. And, you know, we're getting better every single day. I did something today in practice that I couldn't do last week. And I got so much better at 
you know, kick, taking four kicks off of all my walls. Like really when I started to swim again, I broke down things that I like old habits that I could break. And they broke, I broke all of my old habits. Cause I was like, well, I'm already swimming slow in practice anyway. I might as well do things correctly and swim slow than just try and do what I can to swim as fast as I can right now. So that's well, what I, I love did. Hearing you talk about breaking down old habits since mm -hmm. I'm in the business of helping people do that. Yeah. I and mean, and you really have to just, you know, I think breaking habits is also kind of a pride thing, mm. you know, um, especially in, in the sport of swimming, you know, not to get too technical, but um, we might just not want to break habits because it doesn't work for us immediately at first to break that habit. And we don't immediately go faster right away. Right. So we say like, well, I went just way slower on that. So I'm not going to do that anymore because the way that I'm doing it right now is faster but you're not doing it correctly right now because your body's not used to it. So oh, I yeah. like that. And I like, I like people hearing this um, yeah. a lot, you know, and being patient with yourself. Yes. It, you know, that seriously, it all ties in with just being patient with yourself and just like giving yourself some more grace and credit, you know? Um, I, I watched that patience when you first yeah. started coming back to compete. I was so impressed with, because you know, Obviously, we all knew what you were capable of, right? I don't know if I did. I think a lot of people had more confidence in me than I did. <laughs> uh, you know what, though? Here's the thing that we know is that subconsciously, the, that, all that physical memory is there. So it was coming back. Mm -hmm. The mental memory was there because you could remember when you chose to focus on those mm -hmm. moments. Yeah. What that great, those great yeah. swims were like, and what, yeah. what that version of Annie Laser was like. Oh, yeah, there's that version of Annie Laser, and she now I'm even more appreciative and ready to move forward. Mm -hmm. so yeah. You fought, and it was really fun to watch. I know maybe it was not so much fun to do. Yeah, it wasn't very fun to do. It was definitely a lot of, um, a lot of times when I would be swimming up and down the pool at pit being like, why am I doing this? Like why, you know, it was a lot of questioning myself, you know? So, um, it might've been really cool to see on the outside, but, um, you know, the everyday aspect of it is really humbling. It really is. But I think even, you know, when you started, you were entering meets, you didn't allow your, the technical part, of your swim to break down in order to try to get a certain place. I watched that. Mm -hmm. And I think that is what a lot of swimmers aren't willing to do and mm -hmm. perhaps and, and athletes. And maybe that's why they never get to the level that you've achieved. And I remember Ryan Murphy telling me once you have to be, you have to be willing to lose at, at times that, that are, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. that if it not necessarily that you like it or that you're you're not trying trying to race but that you're not you're not going to break down that training which you're supposed to be training in that race mm -hmm. um you ha and so that was another um example of patience mm -hmm. and so that and that's hard it can be hard Absolutely. especially when you have and, and i think this is what maybe a lot of even um viewers and listeners may not realize is there's also that outside component always going on uh, where you you hear comments there are all these different, um, you know, articles being written and, you know, and things being said around you, yeah. you have to, where you have to stay in your own mental space to say, and believe I know what I'm doing or I know what my goals are and I'm not compromising mm -hmm. for anybody else. Yep, exactly. Yeah. And I, and I genuinely think, you know, not that I'm suggesting this for everyone. Um, it was just, this is my path and this is my journey and you know, everyone's is different, but you know, I really think taking that year off and then coming back, um, it really humbled me in a lot of ways and it really opened my eyes up to being like, okay, I'm literally at ground zero right now. Mm -hmm. So I can only go up from here. So why not do everything that I can to the best of my ability right now while you know, like you said, I'm already losing right now. I'm already at ground zero, you know, so why not do everything the best to the best of my ability right now so that I have no choice but to go up from here? You know, that's really what I think I learned from the true, you know, 
getting back into shape process the first, you know, six to eight months of, you know, just getting back to being fit and being technically sound in swimming, you know, I think that is truly what I learned most is humbling myself and being open to, you know, enjoying the process, genuinely enjoying, you know, taking the two steps forward I did that day, even though I'm still 198 steps behind where I was a year before, you know, it's, it's all about just, you know, trusting and enjoying the process and humbling yourself to being the best that you can be. I'm going to give you a personal thank you for saying that celebrate those wins along the way, Mm -hmm. the smaller wins. Absolutely. Absolutely. You have like, that was pivotal in my year coming back to swimming. If I wasn't able to sit down and say, Hey, today I took three kicks off of every single wall today. And I did not do that last week. Or like, you know, I went, you know, this much, I still went three seconds slower than I was last year, but I went a second faster than last week. And that is something that I can say. And I did these three things perfectly today. And I can't say that I did that last week. So it's all about just giving yourself grace and giving yourself patience. Like I cannot stress that enough. If you genuinely believe that you've done everything you can do that day to get better. Today and right now (laughs) in this particular time, are you giving yeah. yourself that grace and that patience? <laughs> it's it's certainly, I'll be completely honest, it's certainly a lot easier to now, now that we've heard, yes, this is, you know, um, we're doing this on Wednesday, but, um, you know, especially since we heard yesterday on Tuesday that the Olympics have officially been postponed to 2021, mm-hmm. it's been a lot easier to take a breath and to, you know, take my foot off the gas right now and just be like, okay, you know, the goals that I'm going, that I want to achieve and the goals that I have for myself. And, you know, I don't even want to say goals, but just, you know, where I've been going, I'm going to pick back up where I was. I am. I have no doubt about that. The the journey that I've been on, you know, like it has undoubtedly prepared me for a moment like this when I'm, I can't train, I don't have a pool. Um, You know, taking a whole year off has undoubtedly prepared me for, you know, the mental aspect of when we eventually do get a pool back, which I don't know when that's going to be, but um, it's undoubtedly prepared me for, for, for a time like this, for sure. And, you know, you just, again, just giving yourself grace and giving yourself patience, you know, like the, the miles that you're going to swim and the goals that you guys as kids um, want to reach they will be reached in some way and in some capacity. They will be reached. The timeline might be different than what you want it to be right now. And same with me. I mean, I had, you know, I don't want to say I set goals for myself, but there are definitely dreams that I had for myself that I wanted to accomplish this summer. And that might not happen until next summer. It might not happen at all. I don't know. But, you know, it's not going to happen when I want it to happen. And, you know, you know, but like I to my previous point, you know, the goals are going to be met. The miles are going to be swam right now. Just if you can sit down and say, I am doing everything that I can possibly do right now. Like if you can genuinely tell yourself that, then that is all you can do. If you're, you know, staying in shape as best you can, if you're staying healthy, you know, that is all you can do right now, you know? Right. So that's and work really, on that mental side. Yes, know? exactly. Exactly. Stay healthy, both physically and mentally and emotionally. It's all this, it's all encompassing, you know? So I, that is just the only advice that I can give is, you know, as this whole theme, I guess, of, of my jer- personal journey is, you know, the goals are going to be met. The miles are going to be swum. You know, the medals are going to be won right now, physically, mentally, and emotionally. Are you doing everything that you can do to be the best ber- version of yourself today as an athlete and as a person? If the answer is yes, then we can't stress because, you know, those goals are going to be met eventually. Just the timeline might be a little different than we initially had planned. Well, I guess that's why you became a world champion, Annie. <laughs> <laughs> so I, if, if personally, if, you know, I'm going to do it anyway, but if, if I was going to compete in swimming, I would certainly listen to that advice. And it wasn't just a little bit of advice. You've been talking for quite a bit and I appreciate every minute of it. I am not happy about the circumstances, but I am happy that it we're we're in a little bit of a time, you know, we just got a window. We don't even know how 
how large this went or small mm -hmm. this window might be but we yeah. it, where we can't get athletes to focus on the mental side because not everyone has had the journey that you've had and they and they don't have those mental toughness skills mm -hmm. because you have to be tough to become a world champion period yeah. you have to be able to put that focus between those two lane lines and go after what you want and that's exactly what you did mm -hmm. and not only that that wasn't good enough for you thankfully you want you had even you had more goals and more vision and I think vision is is important for me I have a vision for myself but I have a vision for people that I love and I support too and I have a vision for you so and I've had this vision I told I think I shared this with you just you know when we were talking yeah I think it may have been yesterday but my vision I could see myself in Omaha because I already had reservations I wasn't gonna miss a minute of your swim <laughs> any of your swims and spending time with your mom and we I've done that before I saw myself repeating some of the same things that I did we did in Omaha mm -hmm. um, you know those moments happen and also attending the and creating celebrations mm. but now yeah. I just changed the number in my mind just went from 2020 to 2021 yeah and that's it yep that's it yep and I I try to tell myself you know this this might be such a more like physical way of looking at things you know but you know May of last year which was a little over a year out from Olympic trials I went my fastest time that I've ever swum ever right. um, you know it's the second fastest time in American history so that was 13 <laughs> that was 13 months out from trials so you know now we're about 15 months out from trials so if i'm in the shape that i was last year what i thought was you know 14 months out from trials and right. if, I, if i'm not in that position now and i can you know see myself there you know 13 months out last year then right now i feel like i'm in good shape like anything that i do it's going to be just fine and even after that when i went to pan american games this summer you know I took, I, my coach has said, take three weeks off right now, because when we start back up in September, we're obviously not stopping till after the Olympics. So right. take your time now, physically, mentally, and emotionally to get it together and to just completely zone out from swimming and we will be back and we will be stronger and we, we're going to achieve the goals you want to achieve. So taking a break right now, which is way further out than when I anticipated it was going to be, mm -hmm. I know for me, it's not stressing me out at all. Like I'll be just fine, you know, and, um, and I hope other people can remind themselves of that too. I think those of us who are working on becoming stronger will be stronger, but you oh, have yeah. to put in the work. You oh, have, absolutely. You can't just stay the same. Work. Like the definition no. of insanity is doing the same thing, expecting different results. That's right. And so what we want to look back and say, Hey, this is what I did with that window of time. Yeah. You know, I found, and, and, it was maybe a little bit of a roller coaster, but I made it work and we can yeah. feel good about that. And because we're, things are going to happen. Yeah. Things are going to happen. knows that more, more than you do. <laughs> the, and, I but certainly I, do. But I do think you're a great example for change. And I have tons of added, you know, adjectives I could use to describe you, but I always, always annualizer, when I think of annualizer, I think about being relentless and resilient and you know resetting when you need to I feel like that's kind of in a spot that I'm in right now you know um I'm obviously I'm better now than I was maybe two days ago when we first heard that the Olympics were going to be postponed um you know it's a certainly it's a mix of, of feelings I felt I feel really relieved because right now I don't have a pool to swim in. So if I don't have a pool to swim in right now and you were telling me the Olympics are in three months or Olympic trials are in three months, like, you know, that's crazy. That's just, you know, that's not level of playing of sport. And I know I'm certainly not the only national team member that's in that position right now. Um, you know, at the same time too, like we heard that news and that this is when we still had a pool to swim in on, you know, Monday. So this was two days ago. We got in the pool right after we heard that news and like, you know, we hadn't really given ourselves time to like really feel what was going on. We were still kind of numb and a little in shock. We knew it was coming, but the fact that it actually happening is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we just felt really 
you know, just deflated a little bit. Like we really were ready to go. And I know I'm certainly not the only person who feels this way right now. Um, so it's definitely a mix of emotions, like kind of like, okay, now's my time to just breathe and relax and we're going to get through this and it's going to be okay. And I've had, you know, obstacles before and I've overcome all of them in some kind of capacity. What's to say that I'm not going to overcome this one now? It just wouldn't make sense, would it? No, <laughs> wouldn't add up. So I love how you ask the right questions because that's, you know, that's really important. It's yeah. really important to ask your, you know, just a couple of the questions that I wrote down. Um, what is this preparing me for? Just to go over that again, it's always a great question to yeah. ask yourself. And, and, and you never know the answer to that right <laughs> away. You will never get an immediate answer for something bad that's happening to you. You will never get an immediate answer right away. You will learn the answer to that question down the road when you have something else that you know, you need to prepare for and another roadblock that's facing you or a setback. And you're like, oh, okay, my coach leaving me four months, four years ago at Olympic trials, that's prepared me for one of my main coaches in September, you know, getting let go. Um, you know, a lot of people were really upset about that. And obviously, as a person, I was very upset about that, because I care about that coach, but I was okay, you know, like, I was obviously upset for the humanity side of things, because I really like that coach, and I care about him as a person. But as a swimmer, I knew it wasn't going to change me. And I know that I couldn't have said that four years ago. And, you know, now taking my time off of swimming and being patient with myself and, um, you know, just setting up tiny little steps to success, that's preparing me now for this time where I have no control over the fact that I can't be in the pool. Right. But you have a, a lot of control over yourself and so many things. Mm -hmm. and you oh, yeah. You've yeah. demonstrated that so well. And I think also not just – uh, the questions that you've asked, the tonality that you use when you ask the questions. And I, I do this too, because, but the tonality, um, the question when you said, what now? Mm -hmm. And also another a question, um, what do I do with this? So, mm -hmm. but if you say, okay, what now? Or yeah. what am I going to do with this? Mm -hmm. I, I find myself a lot of times having to change that tonality but I do it right away because I don't like the mm -hmm. feeling that comes with those other, mm -hmm. that other exactly. way. Exactly. It just, it gives it a feeling of, you know, you want, you want to feel like this is a new opportunity in front of you and a new, you know, approach to things or, you know, a way that you can, you know, help your brain um, turn to a new way of thinking. Whereas the other way, it kind of seems like a sense of, you know, helplessness or hopelessness, you know, and you don't want that for your brain. You don't want your mind to be thinking that way. You want your mind to be thinking, okay, like this is going to open my brain to a new way of thinking. This is going to open my brain to a new set of challenges. And when I overcome it, I'm going to be so much more cultured and so much more opened up to different ways of thinking and different paths to success because there's not just, you know, one, like I said earlier, you know, four years ago, I thought that there was just this tiny box and every single thing in my box, in my toolbox was the only way I was going to reach success. And I now know that that's just simply not true. And your brain works the same way. What a huge insight that was too. And to get out of that, um, there's a, there's a, an inventory. It's, it quickly helps you get to themes that are holding you back. One of the themes is it's horrible when things don't go the way I want them to be. You find it all over the place in self-talk. Mm -hmm. But guess what? Good news. You don't have that anymore right not anymore I did and I like yeah. I said it was a lot of trial and error to get to where I'm at now and I genuinely believe that my physical swimming has gone hand in hand with my now my mental approach in swimming I genuinely 100% believe that well and that's exactly what needs to be needs to happen right what people mm -hmm. need to do is that yeah mm -hmm. so absolutely hope, hopefully anyone listening or watching this just save themselves some trouble and jump right there. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm here to hope to do because, you know, it took me, I'm 25. So it took me 25 years to, you know, learn what I've learned. And I certainly know that I'm going to look 25 years from now and be like, Oh wow. I had so much to learn even from when I was 25. But, you know, as an athlete, I hope that, you know, my insight from, you know, my years of trial and error and trial and success um, can help anyone else that, you know, has obviously gone through some of the things that I've gone through, because I know I'm certainly not the first swimmer to go through these things, and I will not be the last. So, yeah. Well, that might be true, but you have had a special journey, in my opinion, and you've accomplished some amazing things, and you're not done yet. 
So not done yet. Thank you. Yes, not done yet. Well, thank you so much for doing this. I feel like we could talk forever because you have, oh, yeah. you have a lot of insight. Awesome. Well, I hope I helped. Well, you did help and enjoy your family. Enjoy this well. time because you know, you'll be right back to what you were doing before. And yeah. And um, there's a whole lot more to you than just swimming. And on, oh, on yeah. Saturday, I'm actually talking about that on a yes. lot more, just about you know developing your full identity. So 100% mm-hmm. swimming great, and it's given me a lot of opportunity, and it's given me a lot of success. But as I learned from my year outside of swimming, like you know, swimming's not the whole world, and it's not everything, and it doesn't define you. And you know, it's a big part of my world, but it's not my world. You know. Thank you so much again. I no really problem. It. We had some technical difficulties, and maybe all the video isn't going to be perfect. But you know what? They'll be able to. It's hear so it. great now, though. It is so great now. Okay. I know. Yay! Great ending. That's all, and that's that's what we want. Thank you so much again, Woo-hoo. Annie. Look at